The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development launched the Neighborhood Stabilization Program in 2008 to stabilize communities across the country hit hardest by the housing crisis. We visited four of these communities in 2011 and now return in 2014 to learn about the successes, Congratulations. the challenges, and the continued stabilization efforts. The city of Columbus is a large, sprawling city that was hit early and hard by the foreclosure crisis. It experienced over 35,000 foreclosure filings between 2008 and 2012, leading to a sharp spike in vacancies in REO properties, often concentrated in neighborhoods that were already suffering from long-term disinvestment. Through NSP, the city received over $50 million with NSP 1, 2, and 3. And one of the very first things that we did before investing money was to do a market study. Out of that market study, we saw that there were specific neighborhoods that we wanted to go and invest in. Over the years, now that we've been in NSP, we've seen a real ring of impact, our investment actually making a difference in those neighborhoods. One of those neighborhoods was on a near east side, which is north of Broad. Homeport has been investing in the North Aurora neighborhood for over nine years. With the advent of neighborhood stabilization, we have been able to expand the vision that we originally had for the community. We've always had a goal of strategically investing in blocks at a time. We started on 21st. And one of the reasons that street has been such a magnet has been because of the city's partnership with us. That street got all new paving, all new curbs, all new pedestrian lighting. Represented here, you see our home port strategy of centralizing and concentrating our development on a block by block approach. So you have about eight properties just within walking distance of each other that have all been rehabbed or newly constructed to build back on the existing housing stock and bring neighbors back to the neighborhood. The home next door is supposed to be demolished any day now, and they will be putting a brand new home in there similar to this one. And actually, what, 10, 15 years ago, we lived not too far from this area. Back then till now, we definitely see a difference in the diversity in the community, and that also makes it very attractive. The area was definitely in transition when we moved here. There were a lot of vacant properties, a lot of empty lots, but we were confident in Homeport's mission and goals and work. Since moving in, over those five years, we've seen a lot of changes. I went to the Homeport site and I saw this listing. It was the first listing at the top of the website. I looked at it and I said, that is my home. I've always been a good resident, didn't have any evictions or anything, but every time I moved into an apartment, the rent would go up. And then because I was on such a tight budget, I would have to move again. In the last five years, I've moved my kids four times. I'm a single mom, I have three kids, all three of them are in college, I'm supporting them. I mean, without home ports and their assistance, I wouldn't have been able to get this home. This house will provide my children and I some stability. All right. Hey, it's yours and hey. the house is mine. It is yours. Congratulations. Income diversity in an urban neighborhood is crucial. And it's income diversity that in the end of the day really makes a community work. It makes it possible to have a, a grocery store and a dry cleaner and a laundry mat. And it, it makes all of the things that we consider essential to community life, it makes those things possible. Neighborhood of Choice is a phrase that we use to represent what the neighborhood can be. And when we've established that as a goal, it meant that we had to address a number of different things, whether that be the infrastructure by working with the city, whether that be the services by making sure that we are in communication with our community police liaison, or whether that be the housing stock itself. We want people throughout Central Ohio, as well as throughout Ohio, or buyers coming in from out of state, to choose this neighborhood. 
So Novo was the name that we established for this neighborhood, but we also understood the history of the King Lincoln District in the Near East Side. So we wanted to tie those two things together. And one of the ways that we did that was through the naming of each of the models of our homes. We have the Ella, we have the Dizzy, we have the Louis Way. And we wanted to harken back to the jazz history of the King Lincoln District and tie the neighborhood into what we were doing here. One of the marketing pieces that we established early on was the penguin that you see that we use as our logo. On a lot of the vacant houses, even before we started to develop them, we painted North Abroad, Homeport, the little penguin logo, so that people started to hear that and see that everywhere. We also used it in print media, online. We did coffee cup sleeves. We did sandwich boards. So we did the traditional things that you do to market a brand. North Abroad is existing in an inner city neighborhood in central Ohio. And some of the challenges that come with being in an inner city neighborhood include graffiti, loitering. Now, when was that? It's about five weeks ago. Five we weeks ago. We had that rash of break-ins. Yeah, on. probably like two months ago. And early on, the North Abroad, which is now the Residence Association, established a block watch so that they could address more issues besides just crime. The community needs to come together. Yeah. And like you said, and that was the impetus for continuing activity and also a connection between the new residents and the existing residents. It's great being in this area. I mean, it's an eight minute walk. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Really impressive, like, how close It takes me 10 minutes on my bike to get yeah. to work. It's <laughs> the benefit, right? Another exciting development that we've had recently is the opening of the Spring Street and the Long Street bridges. They have reconnected the Near East Side neighborhood to the downtown core. It's about 60, 70 years ago that our neighborhoods were cut off by the freeway system. But these projects have had the effect of reconnecting us. Homeport strategically looked at the properties that were the biggest problem and they targeted acquiring them so that they could transform them. The genius to their strategy is to make a big difference in a small area. That small area then becomes the momentum which spreads that change, which spreads that revitalization to the blocks immediately around it. We asked ourselves, how are we going to keep this going? We knew that those resources were going to go away. The city has stepped up and we're back to using bonds again and doing it in a way that is now using the lessons learned from NSP.